Well, I don't think I knew much about conservation, but I always loved being out of doors. As I got older, I got more interested in this farm, which my father was very interested in, and in um, modern agriculture. We sort of bonded over how do you farm. I kept thinking if you grew crops better, we could feed more people, which took me to the Col Cornell College of Agriculture, where I got my degree. Since I was a grown-up, realized the preciousness of land and undeveloped land and how hard once land is destroyed, how impossible it is to get it back. In uh, the late 60s, I read a piece on how our water was so polluted and the Cuyahoga was catching fire and everything. I just got really mad. Uh, and so I ended up working for Congressman John Blotnick of Minnesota, who became chair of the Public Works Committee and wrote with Senator Muskie the 1972 Clean Water Act. So I didn't have anything to do with it, but I was there for the start of the whole environmental movement. It was one place that I felt comfortable. I felt comfortable I could talk nature and environment, um, and no one d dis dismissed me. Well, women weren't supposed to be political outspoken and um, yeah I just didn't fit the you know the norm. It was fairly hard we didn't have much of a, a chance of rising or we were paid less and we were paid I mean we were not there to really do legislative work. The whole women's liberation movement was moving at that time too and I think People, even men as well as women, started to realize what it was really, what was really going on there, and things changed. Well, I actually think this, the, the um, arena of farming uh, and uh, nature, uh, uh, conservation work, environmentalism, I think it is very welcoming to women. If you look at the farm, the women in, if you look at the FFA, you know, FFA is Future Farmers of America in the high schools. The majority women, girls. I think I would just support what's what's happening and it's growing. You know, don't hold back because you're a woman. I mean that and you shouldn't let anybody hold you back. I mean I know it's a fight. You have to stick with science, you have to stick with the truth, you have to speak truth, and I just got my original thing, but you have to speak truth. The city of Baltimore, in its infinite wisdom, decided that all the dredgings from the, out of, that they take out of the harbor, yes. they were going to build a peninsula on part of my land. We have a point that sticks out and put a 400-acre peninsula full of all the dredgings. And I said, well, I didn't think that was such a good idea. Well, too bad, lady. I said, no, don't say too bad to this lady. And so um, I, that's when I know I got in touch with the Eastern Shore Land Conservancy and said, wait a minute, we have a problem here. Well, I said to them, for instance, okay, we're going to have four, 400 acres. Is it my 400 acres? Is it somebody else's 400? The government's 400 acres. If it's the government's, can Tom, Dick, and Harry come and picnic and camp and do whatever they want out there? And do they have the right to drive all the way through my farm in order to get there? <laughs> oh, I don't, if it's mine, do I have to pay taxes on it? Oh, I mean, there were a lot of things they hadn't thought through. But the real killer was that it's wonderful spawning ground for the striped bass. So DNR got in there in a big hurry and said, wait a minute. <laughs> and then they did Poplar Island instead, which has been a huge success. Much more sensible. The pressure on the land from people, from developers, um, is it's only going to grow. So it's, um, it's critical to save land. I mean, this isn't just a simple little thing of, well, should we save that field or shall we put a house on it? This is, shall we save our air, our water, people's lives? But it's a pressure between the needs of people and the needs of the earth. And right now, I think the earth is rather mad at us. What Rob has done and they, with the organization 
It's amazing. And the amount of land that has been saved and the brilliant ideas that come out and how they're working with communities and towns now. I mean, it's very exciting. And um, my grandson is chairman of the board at the moment. So um, we're very involved with it, yes. Big cheerleaders. So um, my husband was asked to come and to hear uh, uh, what this, uh, some individuals wanted to do with their plan, their idea. And um, so we went to Y, the Y House, and, uh, and we heard this little presentation. And we were introduced to this young man who what they were hoping would be the head of it, which was Rob Etkin. And uh, so he agreed to give them $10,000. That was, that was their ask at that time. And it was, you know, the very beginnings of the Eastern Shore Land Conservancy. Well, I think the idea that preservation of farms, uh, we were already seeing the development, many of the farms had been broken up and development was a little bit scattershot and uh, there wasn't a lot of planning going on in communities, counties. And part of the problem was that farms could be broken up or they could sell off, farms could sell off part of their land and developments could start, so you had that happening farms needed to be saved. So here was a, a, a reason that farms could stay intact and they would um, benefit financially by putting their land in easement. Very important because we were watching this all over the shore, particularly in this area. So one of the biggest changes uh, after Eastern Shore was, had a, a real foothold uh, and was being very successful in preserving uh, or establishing easements. Uh, they also still were running into the problem of uh, counties and incorporated towns not using good planning. And so it was, and I was on the board at the time, and the board was very supportive of the idea that we had to ju jump into that. We couldn't just let, you know, it wasn't just about preserving farms, it was about planning. And so therefore that was a, another um, angle that we had to, to take on in order to uh, really achieve our goal. And uh, the board embraced it, the staff, of course the staff did too. I thought that was really important. Well, I know that I've saved some land that will never be developed, so that's, a, that's hard and fast because that farm over there and all this farm has all been put in their easement, so it cannot be developed. I want, my legacy is not going to be leaving a foundation. It's going to be the partners uh, that I've worked with who will then themselves be sustainable. And so that, that's, that's my goal. My legacy is going to be my partner's, not, not glorifying me. I think, to be honest, it's not what I have achieved. There is so much more to do. It is, uh, I hope, what I can represent is that the work is only, you know, we've done, made small steps. We have a lot more to do. And um, I just hope that people will be inspired, women will be inspired, men will be inspired, boys and girls will be inspired to do everything they can do to protect nature and um, the environment and our beautiful country.